In this video, we're going to look at ratio. Let's start off with some fractions. If we look at this square here, we can see it's split into four smaller squares. I can see that I have one of the four squares shaded and three unshaded. So if I wanted to write these as fractions, we'll start with the shaded. We've got one quarter and the unshaded, so unshaded, we can see now that we have three quarters. When we're talking about ratios, we compare now the parts. So for every amount of one thing, how much is there of another thing? So if I wanted to write this as a ratio, I would say the ratio of shaded to unshaded would be one to three. So I have one shaded part for every three unshaded parts. Or if you like, we can set the other way around. For every three unshaded parts, there's one shaded part. So this is the ratio of shaded to unshaded. This is going to be the ratio of unshaded to shaded parts. Let's look at this one right here. I've got two shaded and three unshaded. So we could say as a ratio now, it would be two to three. So that is shaded to unshaded. If we wanted it the other way round, unshaded to shaded, it would be three to two. If we look at this one here, I've got three shaded and I've got seven unshaded. So it'd be a three to seven ratio. We can see that if I wanted to write this back as fractions, adding these two together, we'd have three tenths and we'd have seven tenths. So we can see now the connection between ratios and fractions. If I look at this one here, the shaded ones, I've got four of those. The unshaded ones, I've got four, eight, 12, 16. So if I go ahead, I can write this as a ratio of shaded to unshaded as four to 16. Like fractions, we can simplify this and we divide by the highest common factor. So the biggest number that go into, goes into four and 16, that is going to be four. So I can divide four by four and that will give me one. I can divide 16 by four and that will give me four. And if we look at that now, we can see that I have for every, now putting these as bigger squares, for every shaded square, I have four unshaded squares. So what I've looked to do is simplify this ratio into its lowest form. So it is a four to 16 ratio, but we can write it as a one to four, and that's shaded to unshaded. Unshaded to shaded would be a four to one ratio. So for every four unshaded, we have one shaded. If we look at this, we have on here five shaded, so five and then four unshaded. So the ratio of shaded to unshaded is five to four. So when we're dealing with ratio, we're just looking at comparing the total parts. Let's go ahead and do some work with ratio. So what we've got here is a square. We've got a circle, another circle. We've got a triangle, a triangle, and another circle. What I'm going to do is write a ratio now for these. So we're going to compare parts. So if I put the square there, and then I put the circles just here, and I put now the triangles here, we can write a ratio. So we're looking at the parts here. So if I wanted to write this as a ratio of the squares, which is one, to the circles, which is three, to the triangles, which is two. So these are in a one to three to two ratio where I've taken now the squares, the circles, and the triangles respectively. If I move this around, for example, now if I put this over here, we would have a three to two to one. So you do have to follow that. Okay, let's look at another one. So this time we've got lots more objects. And again, starting with the squares, let's put the squares together. We've got here on now, let's put those there. We've got the squares just here. So we've got three of those. Let's put now the circles together. So we've got five, how many circles have we got? And we can put these. So just collecting them all up. You could probably count them instead of doing this. I'm just gonna make it look nice and neat. That looks like we've got nine and then the triangles now. So we can put the triangles here. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have six of those. So if I wanted to write a ratio for the squares to circles to triangles, we have a three 
to nine to six ratio. We can of course simplify this and we can divide each of these by the highest common factor or the largest number that goes into each. So dividing by three, I would have one to three to two. And if we look at that, that now breaks the ratio down. And of course we could split these up now into threes if we wanted. So if you look at this one here, what we could do is have this now as one part. Then this one, if I just tidy that like so, put that round there, that's now two parts. And then we have another one collecting these up in threes. We can see now that this is going to be in a one to three to two ratio. So nice and straightforward, we're just now comparing the parts. Okay, let's go on. We're asked to simplify the following ratios. So we simplify ratios like we simplify fractions. We find the highest common factor that we can divide each of the parts by. So if I look at this one, I can now simplify this, dividing both by two, and we'd say that this is a five to one ratio. So for every one of these we have, we've got five of these ones. This one, I can't divide by 14, I can't divide by 21, but I can divide by the highest common factor of these two numbers, which is seven, and that would give me a two to three ratio. So for every two of these I have, I've got three of those. Often it's a case of either spotting it or just breaking them down by trying to half them, divide them by three, divide them by five, and all of your prime numbers. If I look at this one, I've got three parts this time. We've got 12, six, and three. We can divide each of these by three, so I could write that as a four to two to one ratio. So that now is fully simplified. It says in a school, 250 students are girls. Find the ratio of boys to girls, given your answer in its simplest form. So if we look now, there are 250 students. We've got 100 girls, so just writing this here. So girls are 100. That must mean that the boys are 250 minus the 100, and that gives us that there are going to be 150 boys. So the ratio of boys to girls would be 150 to 100, and we need to simplify this. So it's entirely up to you on how comfortable you are with this. We can divide each of these by 50, and that will give me a three to two ratio. If you're unsure, you can divide by 10 and keep going until you simplify this fully. We're asked for the ratio of boys to girls. If it was the other way around, girls to boys, it would be a two to three ratio. So do check the wording of the question. Okay, we're asked to write the following ratios in the form one to n. So what I want here is one just here and then n, which is going to be a number just here. All I do is divide both parts by five. So that would give me a one to eight over five ratio where n is equal to eight fifths. So it's just written as one at two. This one here, we would divide both by seven and leaving it now as a fraction, it would be one to n with n being four over seven. Often this is a nice way to write a ratio if we're doing any problems with quantities or looking at proportion. Okay, we're asked to write the following ratios in the form n to one. So this time we're just simply going the other way. So I want my one just here, so I'm going to divide both of these now by the five. So we'd have three over five to one, and that would give me n is three fifths. This one just here would be nine over two to one, and n would be nine over two. So that's writing ratios in the form n to one and one to n. Okay, we're told Sam needs to make a drink from raspberry juice and lemonade. The ratio of raspberry juice to lemonade is three to five. How much lemonade should he use if he uses 200 ml of raspberry juice? So let's go ahead and write this now in a one to n ratio. So what we've got then is the raspberry and we've got the lemonade. So if I wrote this in a ratio, I could write this as one to five over three. So that would give me the ratio. If he uses 200 ml of raspberry juice, which is this one right here, all we're going to do to find the amount of lemonade is multiply this now 
by five over three. That will tell me how much lemonade we need. And this is one way of doing it. So if we do that in a calculator, 200 multiplied now by our five over three, and we can find out how much lemonade is required. So that's going to give me now 333 mil. So let's put that 333.3 recurring milliliters. So I can work that out by simply writing this as a one to N ratio. It's certainly not the only way, but it is an option for you. So that's looking at a one to N ratio or N to one ratio in context. Again, you could have taken this, divided it by three and multiplied it by five as an alternative approach. Okay, we're now going to look at sharing money or sharing quantities in a ratio. It says share 36 pounds in the ratio three to five. What I need to ask myself is how many total parts have I got? A common error students say is you've got two parts. You've got this part and you've got this part. That's not correct. We've got three parts and we've got five parts. So we have eight total parts. So we have eight parts here. And what we need to do is now go ahead and divide 36 into eight parts. So if I do 36 divided by eight, we could do this on a calculator. This is going to give me 4.5. So one part, so just writing this down, one part is equal to four pounds and 50 pence. So all I've done is split this up. I've taken the amount of money and I've now put this into eight piles. This person right here would have three piles. So all we'd need to do is three times by the four pounds 50 and that would give me now in total, what's that going to give me? 13 pounds and 50 pence. This person right here has five parts. So they'll have five multiplied by the four pounds and 50. And we can write this down that this is going to give us now in total 22 pounds and 50 pence. Do these two add back up to give the 36 quid? And as we can see quite clearly, they do. So all I've done is split this up and shared it out. So for example, if we had, let's say we had 90 kg of sand, so 90 kg of sand, and we needed to split this into a seven to three ratio, I can see that I've got 10 total parts. So 90 divided by 10 gives me nine. So that tells me one part is going to be equal to nine kilograms. So if this uh, pile or this person has seven parts, seven times by nine is going to give 63 kilograms. If I do this one right here, three times by nine gives me 27 kilograms. So that shared, and if we look at those, they clearly add back up to give 90. So when we're sharing it, don't fall into a trap of saying that there are two parts, there are eight parts, we share the quantity and then multiply that part now by the amount we've got to share it out. Okay, Bob, Fred and Sue share 54 pounds in the ratio six to two to one. Find out how much uh, they each get. Okay, so how many total parts have we got? Six, two and one. Six plus two plus one is nine parts. So 54 divided by nine is going to be equal to six. So writing this out, one part will be equal to six pounds. So that's all I want to do. So I'm going to write this nice and set up. Bob, we're going to have six times by six, which is going to give us 36 pounds. If we look at Fred, Fred is going to have now two times by six, which is going to give him 12 pounds. And finally, Sue is going to have one part. So she has one lot of a six, which is six pounds. And we can see that if we add all of these up now, we're going to end up with the 54 pounds. This must equal 54 pounds when you add it up. If it doesn't, then you've done something wrong. So we share this into a ratio of six to two to one. It's not three parts, it's nine parts. 
Jeff and Sally share some money in the ratio four to seven. Sally has 28 pounds. How much money did they share? The way I like to do this is with an equivalent ratio. So we use equivalent fractions when we're dealing with fractions. We could do exactly the same with ratios. So what I'm going to have then is a four to seven ratio. So the seven parts accounts for 28. So what have I done to get from seven to 28? The answer now is multiplied by four. Or what is 28 divided by seven? And that gives us four. Therefore, I'm going to need to multiply this one by four and that's going to give me 16. So we can see now that Jeff, so writing this in, Jeff has 16. We've got Sally, who's got a total of 28. So if we add these together, adding them together, we're going to end up with 44 pounds. So that's one way you can do it. Alternatively, you can say now that seven parts is equal to 28 quid. So one part will be equal to 28 divided by seven. So one part is going to be equal to four pounds. So if one part is equal to four pounds, we can say that Jeff has now four times by four pounds. Let's write this in, four times by four pounds, which is gonna give him 16 pounds. Make sure you're answering the questions. How much money did they share? The answer is 44 pounds. So we're kind of working that one backwards. Okay, let's have a look at another one. The ratio of workers to managers in a factory is seven to two. Given that there are 28 workers in the factory, find one, the number of managers, two, a fraction of the total workforce who are managers. So if we look at this again, we have something very similar to the last one. So we can see that the ratio of workers is seven, so let's write this in, seven to two. So if there are 28 workers, what if I multiply this up by? The answer is four. So I need to go ahead and multiply this one up by four, and that's going to give me now a total of eight. So the number of managers we can say is eight, as I've done that with an equivalent ratio. Manage, managers is equal to eight. Quite clearly the multiply is not always gonna be four, it just happens to be four in these particular cases. Okay, we now need to write the fraction of the total workforce who are managers. We can do it from here, or we can just do it from this point right here. And this goes back to the idea now of the relationship between ratio and fractions. We have now nine total parts. So we can say that this is seven ninths for the workers, and we've got two ninths for the managers. Alternatively, if you didn't spot that, if we have a look, we have 36 workers in total. So 36 and 36. If we look at the workers and the managers, we have 28 of these and we have eight of these. We can simplify each of these fractions, dividing this one by four, that's going to give me seven over nine. Dividing this one by four, that's going to give, let's just write 36, uh, that's going to give me two over nine. So we can see now the relationship between them. These are the total parts, and if these are all of the people involved, we can say now that two ninths of the workforce are managers. So make sure that we're answering that question. There is your answer, two ninths are managers. So that's a, an introduction to ratio. We've looked at simplifying, we've looked at sharing, and then we've looked at a bit of proportion in there too.